see you later. On the Messon. And he's got it. And streaming live on the Messon app. It all starts right now. Mets haven't lost a series yet this year. They've played nine. They've won eight. They've tied one. Nationals will try and end that hot streak tonight. Beat their division rival for a second straight day and win a series. They put up eight runs last night to cap a comeback win. After falling behind 3-0 in the top of the first, that continues a positive trend for this Nationals offense of late. See the record improved in those last 11 games. Offensive numbers nearly double the number of runs per game. That batting average with runners in scoring position, a huge jump as well, getting more power. And Kevin Franzen, this offense is clicking. The bullpen's been solid, getting some solid starting pitching as well. The Nats are kind of rounding into form a little bit the last couple weeks. They are, and they're taking advantage of mistakes by the other team. They're taking advantage of good outings by their starting staff. It all starts with them. I mean, you could say anything about the hitting and, and the bullpen, but the starters have been setting a tone. If they get out there and they get going, they get the five, five plus, got something shaking for them. And then you get three and two thirds scoreless from your bullpen last night to go along with the eight runs, the two home runs from Soto and Cruz. Pretty good formula. Joanna Doan will go against Taiwan Walker today. Positive stuff from Adon his last time out. Taiwan Walker got hit around his last time out. Yeah, for Yoan against the Angels, the five walks you're going to look at and you're like, that's a lot. Well, he pitched around some certain guys and got the next guy. For me, Yoan Adon has got to stay in that zone, top of the zone with the fastball, have some success against this team. And for Taiwan Walker, make him come over the plate. You get him over the plate, you're going to you're gonna waffle him. Yeah. Going to waffle him? Yeah, it's breakfast time. Could pancake him too. Josh Bell looking to see his ball club win a series today over the Mets. It's weather day at the ballpark. A little cloudy. Got to get the shades on today. Michael Franco's fired up. Game three, a rubber game between the Nationals and Mets is coming at you next. And by the Masson app. Check out the all-new Masson app. Don't miss a second of the action. Download yours today. They got a Go Nats banner on the crane out beyond right field. More stuff getting built up in Navy Yard all the time. 68 degrees in Southeast DC this afternoon. Pretty cloudy. A Little bit of a breeze blowing from right to left here at Nationals Park. Buck Showalter's lineup in this rubber game. Couple changes for him. Starling Marte stays up there in the number two spot out there in right field. Pete Alonso has raked against the Nationals in his career. And how about since 2019, the most home runs in Major League Baseball. J.D. Davis back in the lineup today, batting seventh as the DH. They will face Yoan Adone. His last time out, pitched well against a good Angels team, allowed five run, or rather three runs in five innings walked five struck out six looking for his first win since April 19th. Yeah and the high walk total we get that with 18 but 27 punch outs first inning is so key for him trying to get in a good rhythm he and Kaber getting on the same page and it's really not a confusing you know pitch arsenal that he has when you look at that so let's take a look at it. that cast powered by Google Cloud you're going to get a four seam fastball it loves it at the top of the zone big curveball. We don't like it that it's hanging up there so much, but the changeup has been there sparingly. And if you can get that consistently, he's thrown it against righties, he's thrown it against lefties, but it's usually fastball, curveball, averaging out at 95. Have a good day, Yoan. Nats would like to see him work in that off speed stuff a little bit more. Brandon Nimmo will step in against Yoan Adon to lead this thing off. Hmm. Doesn't get the call on a fastball bottom of the zone. Now 2 0. Nimmo 1 for 2 with a walk career against the Doan. Who started against the Mets. Third game of the season. Allowed four runs over four and a third here at Nationals Park. All four of those runs came on the Pete Alonso Grand Slam. Look at the Nats defense behind Yoan today. Hernandez, Thomas, and Soto and right. And then you got Franco and Strange Gordon on the left side of the infield. Hernandez Bell on the right side. 
Over Ruiz behind the plate. Nemo taking his time ahead of this 2 1. Three and one. Chad Fairchild has the plate in this series finale. Laz Diaz, the crew chief, down at first. Ryan Wills at second. And Trip Gibson out there at third. Well, he went knees first pitch of the game. It should have been a strike. Went all over the place. The two balls that Nimmo has swung at, more middle of the plate than anything. Three two just misses lead off walk for Brandon Nimmo. Guy does a great job of setting the tone for the Mets offensively. And for Fairchild you're, you're looking at ball at the top of the zone he's really good at. Ball down, you saw the first pitch. That should that, that's right in his wheelhouse as far as being able to give you a little bit down below the knees. Nimmo on for the sixth time in this series. Brings up Starling Marte. 0 for 2 career against the Don. Had a bunt single in the first inning yesterday. Michael Franco picked up a throwing error as the ball got by Josh Bell. A run came in. But yesterday marked the first game all season for Andy where the Nationals made one or more errors and yep. won a ball game. Well, you got to be able to do that. Change up. There you go. Gets the call for strike two. Yeah, and he'll give you a little bit inside on the righties. That one's a good change up. Again, a pitch that he hasn't used a whole lot this year. He's only thrown now 13 change ups to right handers. 149 fastballs. That's just the righties. Marte extends to get a piece. That back to back change ups right there. Yep. We saw a few in Anaheim that they, they were really, really effective. If you're going to load up the zone with so many fastballs, if you can, the, cha the curveball is a good thing to have, yes. But what pairs perfectly with it? What goes down and has that action? It's a change up. He doesn't have a big sinker. But just being able to get that that eyes at a different level and great pitch. Pulls the fastball a little bit. Talked to him yesterday. Asked what his biggest key is as he gets deeper into his first full season at the major league level. He said consistency with the fastball. He said sometimes my arm slot kind of drops down a little bit. Fastball sprays. Said he needs to find that consistent arm slot. Marte on a line to D Strange Gordon. A good read by Brandon Nimmo over at first, and he retreats. But the Nats have out number one. And what does he get? He gets him on that curveball. He set him up that whole time. Waiting for it, waiting for it, waiting for it. Gets it and way out in front. Nice job by Johan. Francisco Lindor. Francisco. Went two for five on Tuesday. That's held him to an 0 for 4 with a couple of strikeouts last night. Hayward likes matching up. If he if you punch out a guy or you get a soft contact on a pitch, he'll go to it the first at bat. For the, or the batter next, right? The first pitch. He went good curveball to get Starley Marte and it goes right back to that curveball. Little change up right there that gets a little bit of a chase. Two and one. 
And Lindor, all fastballs, right hand fastballs, high slugging percentage against all of them, 455 plus. Curveball, changeup, that just, it, it matches up. That's why you've seen three so far from him. But you still got to be able to show him a fastball at some point. First fastball that he's thrown to Lindor, but it misses. Three and one. And the reason why I say that is it doesn't. Oh, you could still pitch off of that, pitch, off that fastball. Get him off that off speed just to make that much more effective. Pete Alonso lurking in the on deck circle. Don would love to face him leading off the second. Counts now full. Perfect pitch right there, down and away. Get a double play ball here, get out of this right now. It'd be awesome to see just go, if he could go change up, have the confidence to go change up, down and away. 3 2 pitch right here. Nats go into a shift on the infield in this two strike count. Michael Franco over to the right side. Runner goes. Lined well foul. Big jump. Runner goes again. Ball four. And D. Gordon, D. Strange Gordon wisely sprints over to third base with the third baseman Franco on the right side, making sure Nimbo Nimmo couldn't take an extra 90 feet. And he went change up right there, just missed down. He starts that up a little bit, more belt high to Lindor instead of like around the mid thigh knee. You might get some action on that. So two walks here in the first inning issued by Yoan Adon who told me he knows that's something he needs to improve upon. He's not given up that many hits this season. Only 29 hits in 28 in the third innings coming into today. But 18 walks. So now 20 free passes on the season issued by the 23 year old righty. Yeah, league average is eight and a half percent, eight eight point seven percent walk rate. He's at 13 and a half. Now it's climbed even more. He's over 14 percent. Pete Alonso hit that grand slam off Lindor, or F, off Adon back in the first series of the season. Went one for three with a strikeout in that ball game. Only time he's faced Yohan Adon. Career hitting 350 against the Nationals with a slugging percentage of 711. <laughs> that's not OPS, that's slug. I mean, facing him with nobody on, totally different deal, right? Like you, you feel like you challenge him more and you get. Guys get on base and you start nitpicking on him. Again, you got to make your pitch. You don't have to make the perfect pitch because that's usually when. Something over the middle of the plate, and he doesn't miss that. Big pitch here in a 2 1. Did he go? He did. Laz Diaz said swing, and it's 2 and 2. Did he? Yeah, oh, yeah. Sure Definitely did. did. He's wearing those ski goggles, huh? Getting off the lift right there. <laughs> Straight from the ski lift Straight of the ballpark. From the slopes. We know it's been cold back here. <laughs> Warming up. Breaking ball. Fills the count. Already at 23 pitches for Yohan. Not a good ratio either. 12 balls, 11 strikes. And again, the first inning for me has been so key for him in getting that. Finding that rhythm. Number of long innings for Johan Adon this season. Payoff pitch. Swing and a miss. Big strikeout there from Johan Adon, and there's two away. 
You know, sliders, couple curveballs, a little change up, and then I'll throw the fastball by you. Curveball, they, I mean, it's not a bad, that, those two right there, back-to-back -back breaking balls, weren't in bad spots, nor was that one. That pitch right there, to have the confidence to go in on it. First strikeout of the game for Johan Adon. Brings up Jeff McNeil with two on and two out. Lands a curveball for strike one. McNeil 0 for 2 off a of Doan career. The Nationals sticking with that infield shift against the Mets second baseman. Franco into the 5.5 hole. Just missing. I mean, again, you're looking at a guy that's not throwing any, really any fastballs. You got a guy right here, Jeff McNeil, handles fastballs well, but you still got to be able to establish it at some point. Because you're going to do that. You're just going to. Be down in the zone with it. Unless a lot of this is thinking, you know, we saw it in Anaheim with Eric Fetty. Maybe Martinez going to his pointing to his head. Be smart here. Know the guy on deck. I've got 11 fastballs of his 28 pitches so far. Yep. Fouled off left side, the count's full. Again, it's the first inning. And he's trying and he's trying to find a way out, so he can't just go with two pitches on it, but he's throwing four seamers, change up slider, curveball, he's throwing a sinker three times. He's shown everything already in the first inning. He has no surprises for them. 30th pitch of the first inning coming. Runners will take off. Three walks now for Johan Adon in the first, and the bases are loaded. And here comes Jim Hickey. That slow walk out right there, it's more or less just give you time. Take a deep breath. Let's get back in, locked in. Over his last three starts, including this one today, Yohan Adon has issued 11 free passes in now nine and two thirds innings. Well, and if you can make sure that they don't hurt you, then it, it's okay. You're going to be okay. But you walk three in the first inning, and you're just you're, you're going to be playing with fire. You got to be able to get some quick outs here and there. You got a guy right now in Marcana who's not a very big first pitch swinger, but guess what? Runners are on base, bases loaded. He's going to be aggressive, so attacking with fastballs, trying to get ahead. First thing Davey Martinez said when he sat down at the podium in the press conference after last night's win no walks. He was happy with this ball club, not issuing a single free pass. Canna rips one foul on the first offering. So a don't try to. Refocus here. Some high leverage pitches early in this ball game now. Yeah, no, eight for 27 runners in scoring position. You go to two outs. Not or six of those eight hits are with two outs. Six for 15, 400 average. Breaking ball stays high. Lane Thomas a couple steps back in center. Soto in right and Yadiel Hernandez in left pretty much straight up. Soft line drive over the head of a leaping D Strange Gordon. 
Two runs will come in. McNeil over to third. And Mark Canna, some more two out runners in scoring position damage. The Nationals in an early 2 0 hole. Yep, and when you can't find the fastball location, you just try to go up on the zone and you go up and in. A lot of these guys for the Mets, strong, strong hitters. So two walks score on you. Here's J.D. Davis. Went one for three with a walk and a sacrifice fly in game one of this series. Get deliberate there in the mound, and you get in the same timing. Cannon will take off on you as well and get another guy in score position. Pitch gets away. Karam's back towards the pitcher's mound, so the only runner that moves up is Canna going from first to second. And McNeil had to stay put. It's the Yank fastball. I mean, Cameron has no chance. No chance. Exit velocity off the wall, pretty high because Neil stays there. I mean, it's that's almost an impossible read for a runner at third. You think, oh, it's so easy? It, no, not with the stone back there. So now two in scoring position with two out. Bullpen starting to stir for the Nationals early. Saw Ty Lore McGill last night, 39 pitches in the first inning. It's going to be the 37th pitch. In on his fists, Franco takes his time and delivers an on target throw. So Johan Adon gives up two and requires 37 pitches to get through the top of the first. Overcast day and it's a tough sky for these outfielders. Here's our Nationals lineup for the rubber game between the Nats and the Mets this afternoon. Hernandez, Soto, Bell, and Cruz. Yadiel Hernandez back in there. He out in the left field. Kbert Ruiz behind the plate. D Strange Gordon gets another start with Alcides Escobar still a little banged up. And Lane Thomas, the number nine hitter here today. They'll face Taiwan Walker. His last start got a no decision after giving up seven runs, six earned in four innings against the Phillies. When you're looking at a guy that since the first half of last year, I mean, you go July on, just a totally different pitcher. Well, first half, so you go April, May, June last year, six and three, 84 innings pitched, 64 hits given up. Since then, one and eight, 86 innings pitched, 23 home runs, a 6.17 ERA. Cesar Hernandez fouls that one out of play, and it's Owen one and one. Take a look at the pitch arsenal for Taiwan Walker. Four seam fastball. He loves the top of the zone. He goes with the sliders, split, the sinker. Slider fastballs the righties, fastball, split, slider to lefties. That's usually how it goes. Tries to go for that punch out with the split against both sides. Landed on the IL after his first start of the season with right shoulder bursitis. Came off to face the Phillies on April 30th, five scoreless, but then, as I mentioned, got hit around against the Phillies his last time out. Down and into Hernandez. He went too far. Trip Gibson punches him out, and there's one away, bottom one. Did he? Maybe. All right, he did. 
Here's Juan Soto. Two run home run in the first inning yesterday. Giving him seven homers and 10 driven in on the season. Here it is. There it goes. It, I mean, the squats that he does, I'm sure, he's got the strongest legs that I, I've seen for a young kid. They call that a strike. They called that a strike. Chad Fairchild said strike one. He's just questioning himself now. He's like, oh, Soto turned around. I'm sure. Oh, dang it. That looked up and in to me, but it's one and one. Soto tied for the top spot in Major League Baseball with 25 walks. Not a surprise to see to see that. Counts even. High ground ball up the middle. Lindor positioned perfectly. And there's two away. Hey, look at that defense behind. I want water today. Cannon left. Nimmo in center. Marte in right. Best arm's going to be in right and center field. Yorme at third. Lindor at short. Time gold glove winner in the American League side. McNeil and Alonzo on the right side with Tomas Nito behind the plate. Josh Bell. Last 152 games, so almost a full season. Batting 300 with a 905 OPS, 28 homers and 99 driven in. Pretty darn consistent since that slow first month, six yeah. weeks or so last year. Drives this one to left. Another opposite field knock for Josh Bell. What else is new? Well, it's fun to watch. Just belt high, corner of the plate away, and he just stays on it. And just hits a laser 102 off the bat right here. They're trying to go in. They try to get in on him. Those long arms are not let him get extended. A short swing for a big man has now reached base in 29 of his 32 games played this season. Extends the inning for Nelson Cruz. Long home run off his bat last night. Three run shot, giving him four on the season. Drives this one out to left. Right at the left fielder, Canna. So a couple balls squared up off Taiwan Walker. But he posts a zero. Mets up 2 nothing. History. Mr. National is making history yet again. Join us at the ballpark June 17th and 18th as we celebrate Ryan Zimmerman weekend. Visit nationals.com slash Zim for tickets and information. World Series patch. The merch lives forever. Yes, it does. Juan Soto is running toward the right field line here, and Joanna Doan was getting ready to throw a pitch. Something on the field that Juan took care of. So Luis Guillorme getting another start. Made a couple impressive. Defensive plays yesterday also chipped in with two base knocks. Type of guy that is valuable on a ball club can play multiple positions, yeah. pick it. And he might have the you know the second best hands on the team because Lindor is pretty good. Oh, that's called ball four. Well, and. and Kaver does something right there that he has, you don't see him a whole lot. He just assumes it's going to be called a strike, stands up, and maybe loses. 
Jeff Fairchild on that one, but that, that's a strike. You got to get that. You, you do. I'm sorry. Chad Fairchild had a ball in on Juan Soto's hands that looked well off the plate, called a strike in Juan's at bat, and now one that we all assumed was strike one, called ball four. The catcher's starting to get comfortable in a good way. Is that, that, that can't happen. Nito squares around to bunt and takes strike one. You got to think if you're Mike Hell right now, if he goes for the bunt, hard bunt to you, you still have a chance to go second base. Charging in hard on this. Nice job by Yohan. Get back in the zone. Got to get back in that zone. Already four walks issued by the 23 year old righty today, and he pulls a curveball there. And you wonder with all these misses, one miss in this at bat has been, or in this inning has been close. Yeah, if you see another one like that, did they get somebody up right away? Is not just like the rounding? ball, it's yeah. not just the number of balls, it's the quality of the balls, yeah, is what you're it, saying? It's not. I, I just, he's so far off right now and he can't hone in on it, and you're seeing the body language by him. The body language from Yohan looks like he's. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how to fix this right now. You can just see he's, he's thinking. Fouled back to the screen. I feel like I'm referencing Max Scherzer a lot, but he used to talk about how he needs to be his own best pitching coach. He needs to know himself better than anyone so that he can fix issues when they pop up be it during a start after a start. And I would imagine it as a time, as a young pitcher that's yeah. something you need to. You figure try. out you try but it's it's again. There's only one Max Scherzer. And having that ability to be that self aware. It's tough to do. Swing and a miss. So a good bounce back there by Johan Adon and gets a chase on a curveball below the zone. Top of the zone, you get that fastball for a strike on the swing through, and then you go down the zone with the curveball. That's pitching right there. Look at that thing pop up right around where the belt high. As a hitter, when you see the curveball pop out of the hand like that, do your eyes light up? If it pops up, that didn't pop up. That came out of his hand with a good plane, like straight on and then down. If it pops up, yes. Because that means you recognize it right away. Not all not all curveballs you recognize the same. It comes out of the same slot. If it pops up, you feel good. If it doesn't, you're like, oh no, where is it? Just slower. And that right there had the same action as like it's coming out of his hand like a fastball and straight down. One and one. Is the curveball that pops out of the hand the easiest pitch to recognize right away? Yeah, it just depends on who's throwing. Like Mary Zito used to throw one that popped up. That wasn't a fun one to, to hit. A lot of break on his curveball. Break. Rich Hill, same thing. Rich Hill's changed his shape on it a lot too. I think over the years, you've seen it pop up and then be a little bit more inconsistent, but it was always a big breaker. Doan told me he's able to kind of manipulate the sweep on his curveball at times. More of a 12 6 or sometimes over the top, and then acts a little bit more like a slider on occasion, but right now struggling to repeat his mechanics and get in the zone. And you're at 28 balls, 22 strikes, first 50 pitches. I mean, that's just a lot right now, and a lot of stress just for him trying to find. That release point, trying to find whatever bitch is working. It's another walk. Second free pass issued to Nimmo in two innings. Fifth already for Johan Adon in the first 10 hitters that he's faced. Yeah, and they're going to get somebody warming up right away. I would assume quickly for the possibility that Pete Alonso comes up again, even though he struck him out. There's Erasmo Ramirez. Throwing with a softball, it looks like. Could be the heavy ball. Probably the heavy ball. 
little plyo ball right there to get warmed up, get loose. First pitch strike to Starling Marte. So two of the three walks that Adon issued in the first inning came in to score. Two more out there here in the second. Swing and a miss. Good fastball in on him. And that's a pitch I think that if he could obviously right now you're not he's not working on this, right? He's just trying to find strikes. But arm side of two righties being able to go in on them, crowd them a little bit would make his life so much easier. And that right there was a perfect pitch. We've talked about the tools that Adon has, the stuff that he has, the confidence on the mound, but he has the most walks issued of any pitcher in Major League Baseball. And tough to have consistent success when that's the case. Yeah, see, he's looking in there and he. It's a ball. He's hoping that Chad Fairchild is going to go out. I mean, it's. You sense like I, I'm just begging for everything right now. You can sense it. It's like sure, I'm, I'm sure the infielders are thinking the same thing. They're watching this. Drilled, nicely picked by Mike Franco to the backhand across the diamonds, and a huge 5-3 double play, turned by the Nationals' third baseman. Mikey going to his backhand side, knowing the wheels that he has to go, gets it in his bare hand. Throws a strike for the double play. Do nothing else. See if they can do it again. Time for some stats with Lowe's. Darnell Coles' his offense. Look at those ranks in the National League. Third in average, third in batting average with runners in scoring position, and that on-base percentage ticking up as well. Yadiel Hernandez is a big part of those runners in scoring position numbers, batting 474 with RISP this season. And he's becoming pretty much Davey Martinez's everyday left fielder now. Yeah, he's earned it. He's earned this opportunity right now, and you're going to stay high, especially with the offense the way it's rolling. He's a big part of that. And when you take him out, you take out a big, a, a big piece of that lineup for the opposing team to plan for. Two and one. Driven to left and well fell. Down and away and just watching the IDL. Some guys are really late, right? That, that That's the look that you're going to get, that foul ball. There's effort trying to go that way. Everything is that way. Make a mistake with something in. Top spin ground ball to the right side. One away. The MLB Ballpark app will complete your next visit to Nationals Park. Buy and manage game tickets, redeem offers, access exclusive content, mobile order, and much more. Download the MLB Ballpark app today. Nice crowd on afternoon weather day here in D.C. Bunch of young ones at the ballpark getting coached up on some weather knowledge before the game. Did you ever take meteorology in college? I did not. I did. How'd that go for you? Yeah, not great. Not great. It was my first online class. Uh, so therefore, the attendance level was not there all the time. You know? Even when you did attend, how was the attention span? Oh, no, not good. Not good. K Bear Ruiz at ground ball. And Giorme, Giorme takes care of that for out number two. 
It was the first, you know, the first online class you take in college. You're like, all right, I, I got this. I don't have to go in, don't do anything, don't have to study ever. And then you go to the test, you're like, I'm just going to look at all the answers. That's right. The professors, they know, they just don't even go anything out of the book. What's up with that? You got to study. How dare you? How dare you? Michael Franco, two for five career off Taiwan Walker with a double. First two weeks of school, you're just like, I didn't think this was going to be like the, you thought it was going to be easy. Meteorology, come on. Everyone could be a weatherman. That's what we think, right? Or a weather person. Not so much. Not so much. Walker needed just 14 pitches to get through his first inning. Now he's trying to put up a 1 2 3 second and force Yohan Adon to get right back out there. Mats would love to give their right hander a little breather. Franco popped up right side. Playable for Pete Alonso. So Adon back to work. Trailing by two as we go to the third. 19 World Series. Same fight, new season. Show up and show some attitude. Get your tickets now at nationals.com slash tickets. We'll go down memory lane on our Nats Extra pregame show tomorrow. Relive some World Series memories. Something else on the field here. Yeah, Soto's getting in his steps. Kids day, right? I mean, a lot of kids <laughs> here. There's a lot of I think flying there around. <laughs> so Yohan Adon, 56 pitches through his first two innings of work, only 25 strikes, and another pulled fastball to start his at bat against Francisco Lindor. Popped in the air, shallow left center. Wind's taking it towards Yadiel Hernandez, who makes the grab on the run. Oof. That ball kept climbing and climbing and it kept coming back. Watching Lane Thomas take a couple steps back and then play it in and God yells the one to come and get it. Nice job by him and a great job by D Strange Gordon to continue out there. Continue out until you hear I got it I got it I got it. And he peeled off. See the flags blowing in and towards the left field foul pole here today. And napkins are flying in the booth. Pete Alonso struck out back in the first. A good fastball from Yoan Adon. One on one. Don't on the attack with that heater. Yeah, I wonder how hard it is too for a pitcher to, to self correct as well when you're he pitches across his body a lot. Right he starts middle of the rubber and his plant foot goes all the way to the edge like third base side of the rubber in line with that. You see a lot of guys that are very in line with home plate on that straight path a little bit probably easier to self correct. Two two coming to Alonzo on the grounds to D Strange Gordon. Two up, two down for Adon here in the third. He told me, Franny, that sometimes he struggles with flying open a little bit. Well, yeah. I mean, think about it. guys that are close. Like I, I would be every once in a while a closed off hitter. And what do you do? You spin. You fire. Like you, your whole body. So hitting and pitching. Similar on as far as fighting that, not opening up that front shoulder. And if you're going across your body on that, you're, you're that's the tendency. Maybe a little more susceptible to that. It's been in the zone here in the third inning. I'll try and retire Jeff McNeil and go have a seat in the dugout.
McNeil left field way foul. Are there any hitters ac across the baseball landscape that choke up as much as Jeff McNeil or Brandon Nimmo and not just in two strike counts. Gets the barrel to this one towards Juan Soto. He's right there. No and it's smart if you do. Just say it. A one two three frame for Johanna Doan. Nats will try and get back in this bottom three. He's drinking his martini. She's got a beer. She's cool. Mets fan. Oh, does he have a beer too. I didn't see that. She's just giving him the cold shoulder right now. She's like he's talking. She's like mm -hmm. yeah. Some good Kevin Franzen analysis doesn't just analyze what happens on the field. Happens experience analyzes experience off the field too. The strange Gordon leading off bottom three. Did you see that one? I think I showed you the one for the Instagram one game where there was the guy and the girl. The girl was I think they were breaking up a Phillies game yeah. I think. Oh, yeah. Was it. Yeah. Yeah. Was she was not feeling it. D getting his third straight start with Alcides Escobar dealing with a little finger issue. And making the most of it too. Played pretty good at a spot that he's not accustomed to at shortstop. But doing just enough at the plate just to keep it going. Long look in by Taiwan Walker who steps off. D played a lot of shortstop growing up but of late. He's been getting a lot more time at second base and in the outfield. Grounds this one to the left side Lindor will plant. Take a couple crow hops and fire a strike for out number one. What I like about D2 with the helmet flying off is it's early. Lucius had the, the late helmet toss, right? I mean, off the head. I appreciate guys that just lose it out of the box. They just don't even have to worry about it. Bryce used to flip it off of his head. Yeah. Get it out of the way. And he had great hair. He did. Still has great hair, but gotta I mean, show that off. Got to show it off. Lane Thomas getting a start out in center field today. It's two for three career off Taiwan Walker with a home run. Pokes this one out to center. Nimmo a few steps short of the track for out number two. And first time through the order Taiwan Walker. Well, that was just one hit. That's one for nine. Yeah, and he, I mean, look at we talked about Yohan and showing everything. He showed everything, but not as as much. It's more been four seamer split. He's thrown an occasional sinker, occasional slider, occasional curveball. So he he still has a lot of places to go that guys haven't seen. First pitch swinging is Cesar Hernandez, and this will be a quick bottom of the third for Taiwan Walker. Who is through three scoreless on just 33 pitches? Baseball is brought to you by the Toyota RAV4. Now's a great time to reserve your new Toyota. Visit your Washington area dealer to learn more. Toyota, let's go places. Where? Anywhere. Okay. Places. Steal one of those yachts. Well, no, we had to take it. Remember, we took it. Right. We yeah. said we were going to take a yacht back from Anaheim. We did. We did. Yeah, we did. On your tab. Appreciate it. <laughs> that would not. <laughs> that would not lead to good things for me. Credit card company calling. <laughs> first, Sir? first pitch fastball from Yoan Adon into Mark Canna, leading off the top of the fourth. We have your highest purchase here at Best Buy for 50 bucks. Uh, this doesn't make sense for. 100 grand. <laughs> Juan Soto moving towards the line. Ball out of play, and it's 0 and 2. There's Mark Lerner. Good to see him back at the ballpark. What's up, Mark? 
Got the shades working today, looking sharp. Got to talk to him, catch up with him the other day. Looking good. Sure is. So great hearing from him after he had his health scare a few years back, cancer, and had to have some surgery on a leg that he's been able to get out on the golf course. That was a big priority for him as he was working back and always smiling at the ballpark. We love Mark Lerner. His customary seat right next to the on deck circle. Weak ground ball to the left side. Johan Adone's going to glove it, but has no play. That's just bad luck there for the Nationals right hander who was filling up the strike zone and got a soft grounder. But Mark Canna's aboard leading off the fourth. And that's fine. That happens. Now it's what you do after that, right? He's shown his ability to mentally get over it right now and get to the next batter. Make up for with a ground ball though. Play. Great job by him just to glove it, not try. We've seen way too many in the last couple of weeks of guys just trying to force it. Hasn't really helped. Here's J.D. Davis. Grounded out to third to end a lengthy top of the first. Look at the both offenses coming into the game 20 percent strikeout rate well below league average. We talked about the two two strike hits last night we talked about the double digit games that for the Nationals hitters not having the 10 strikeout game for what 14 in a row. Yeah. Being able to put the ball in play with two strikes. Sometimes it doesn't matter if it's. Ugly the hard hit whatever it's still a knock and it's still pressure that you're putting on that. That defense. D. Strange Gordon in the first inning last night. Yep. Flipping one out to shallow left center to drive in a run in a two strike count. Yohan Adon ahead of his second straight hitter. Now at 37 37. Balls and strikes. That one drills J.D. Davis. Spun away from it. Got him on the back or the shoulder. Buck eyeing him like he wants to go out there. Not going to happen. And that's that's the mistake that you're just it, it can't happen one two right you're trying to feel you're trying to go in that's having that confidence to go in. So the big question is does he have it. Like my first pitch to. Right here to Giorme, I'm trying to go in, and why? If I if I can't get it in there, it's gonna be easy hitting for the the opposing team. So after a clean top of the third inning on just ten pitches, Yohan Adon again in trouble here in the fourth. Perfect, went in, right there, right away. That, by the way, the 25th hit by pitch to Mets hitters this season, far and away the most in the majors. And you know, we're one thing that we haven't seen, and it's going to linger out there until it happens, is someone on the national side getting one. Because they haven't forgotten, and they think that everything's on purpose, and you understand. One and two. Saw Rasmo Ramirez throwing again in the Nationals bullpen. Got warm a couple innings ago. A 
before Yohan's even on the mound, Gabert's already given him his sign. That's why you see a lot of quick pitching right here. Guillaume stepped out a couple times. Hopes this one fell left side. And that's the part watching guys and seeing if, if they do use pitch comp, which the pitch comp on the wrist is going to be remote control to the pitchers. And the other guys on the infield, as far as D. Strange Gordon, Cesar, and the center fielder. Guys that get it early, that get on the mound and they have that quick tempo. And there's guys that wait till they have to look in and then you just give it to them like normal. Back up the middle. This could be an easy two for the Nats. D. Strange Gordon will turn it. And a big double play. Second double play turned by the Nationals through four innings. And a good job by Yawn to not go after that ball. Your guy is there. That, that's being aware. Yep. He kind of, it wasn't a normal stab. It was kind of just like the slow play on that one. Good job by D. Gordon to make sure. Look at his head go down into the glove right there. Make sure ball security. Canna moves up to third, but there's, there's now two away. And Adon will get Tomas Nito. Strike one. More first pitch strikes from Yoan the last couple innings. And this is the second time that Rosmo has been up in the pen. I don't see him sitting down anymore. That's something that managers and pitching coaches keep track of is those. Yeah, those up and downs. Up and downs. What happened here, I believe, or a little bit ago with Trevor May, we thought. I mean, he got up in the first series. He got up twice, and he sat down. He just wasn't having, you know, the third time, wasn't feeling comfortable on it. Wasn't able to come in, and then things happen. He's now on the injured list mm -hmm. for the Mets. Ground ball left side and through. Well placed grounder off the bat of Tomas Nito and Johan Adon unable to get out of the fourth inning unscathed after that double play ball. It's three nothing Mets. Yeah, and that might be it for him. I just don't see Davey Martinez waiting on this one going third time through. I think both guys D, D Strange Gordon thought that Mikey was going to go after that and Mikey thought D Strange Gordon was going to go after that. Either way I don't think if they both go after it in the moment they're not going to get that one It's a well placed ground ball. So tough break for Johan Adon here in the fourth an infield single and a seeing eye ground ball through the left side leads to our Jiffy Lube pitching change. She's a winning team for a full range of services at Jiffy Lube. Visit JiffyLubeDC.com for a location near you. Erasmo Ramirez coming in. That's with a three nothing lead. And top of the order due up yet again. So it's Erasmo Ramirez for the Nationals. He's been fantastic. 2.31 ERA through eight appearances. He's gone multiple innings. He's gone high leverage spots. Bit of a Swiss Army knife at a Davey Martinez's pen so far. Yeah, and a big thing for him is he attacks the strike zone. You look at it with one walk this year. He's doing it with the cutter, the sinker, the four seamer, changeup curveball. Cutter sinker change to lefties, cutter sinker, four seamer, curveball. To righties. He'll face Brandon Nimmo with two out and Tomas Nito out at first base. Nimmo, two walks in his two plate appearances. Now, here's a guy like with Rosso that he's out there and you see the shift and you're, you're understanding why, because the ability for him to for the most part locate his pitches where he wants to. You know around the area where. Hibbert wants it. The way Johan was going today I wonder how much that plays a part of it like just not knowing where. Pitch is going. Rasmo told me today. It's a period a couple of years ago where he was trying to rear back and. Throw 96 and blow it by guys, and he told himself, "I don't need to do that. I can be effective, commanding 94." That was you, Smarrow Petit. Yeah. I don't like bringing that name up with bad memories here, but <laughs> yeah. I mean, you talk about a heck of a pitcher that used to throw hard, but understood that he didn't need to throw hard. Control over everything, soft contact, quick outs. Ground ball. D. Strange Gordon lays out, but can't get there. Erasmo Ramirez running over to cover third as 
Nito took a turn around the second base bag. It, right as pitch was being delivered, D Strange Gordon takes like two shuffles to his right. If he stays where he was, it's an easy ground ball. Force out somewhere. Watch, right? Over there, two steps, and then he goes back. I think sometimes you overthink it and knowing that what pitch is coming, you're seeing it, you're you're trying to cheat. Starling Marte first pitch swinging. That'll get out of play. Nimmo on base all three plate appearances now for the Mets today. Walked in the first and the second and extends the fourth inning here with a single up the middle. Marte 0 for 2. Right there, Singer under the hands. You have nowhere to go as a hitter. Like it's not like a huge sinker, but you see it, and it just has enough run on it. It just chases you. I mean, that is perfection right there. So really shallow in right field right now. Got the wind blowing in behind yeah. him. And maybe trying to cut down Nito at the plate. Ball's hit his way. Swinging a tip. Rosmo Ramirez gets Marte swinging to end the fourth. Juan Soto will lead off bottom four for the Nats who are looking for some offense off Taiwan Walker. That's with a three nothing lead as we go bottom four here at Nationals Park. Juan Soto will lead off against Taiwan Walker. Grounded out to short back in the first. Sorry, Franny, go ahead. I was going to say, got to find a way to get something on the board right here. Not just one, just finding a way just to cut into it. Just give them, say, hey, we're here. This 3 nothing game feels like it's a little bit further than that. Nats have had runners on the base pass pretty much all afternoon. Nats with just one base runner against Walker through the first three innings. I saw this stat today, Franny. When Juan Soto has two or more RBI in a game, the Nats have a 675 winning percentage. Well, then do that. When he doesn't, when he drives in zero or one run, the Nats have a 430 winning percentage and the run differential plus 182 as a team when Juan drives in two or more, minus 95 when he doesn't get to that two driven in in a game mark. So when Juan goes, the Nats go. Yeah. Or when Cesar goes too, because I mean it puts guys on, and the bottom of the lineup we've seen when they've gone helps out the one part. <laughs> Only two for 24 runners in scoring position this year. I mean, 24 isn't that. I'm not going to sit there and say that's just not a lot. Of that bats yeah. in those situations. 
Well, Davey did say recently that he feels like Juan is chasing outside the zone a little bit well, in those spots, trying to make a little too much happen instead of letting the game come to him. He's only got one walk with it. In runners in scoring position yeah. situations. So you're like looking at it going, oh, okay, yeah, there's a lot of walks involved with the 24 at bats, right? I mean, you're not counting it. No, it's one walk. So there's a lot of swing. There's a lot, like he gets into swing mode in that. But again, having guys on base, creating that. I mean, Cesar is on first a lot, not second. Good take by Soto on a fastball darting in at him, and the count's full. Drilled out to right center. Does it fight through the wind? It hits off the top of the wall. Juan Soto will cruise into second standing up with a leadoff double here in the fourth inning. That ball was touched. That ball was scorched right there. How did that not get out? Another two strike hit. Oh well. Oh hum. Splitter stays in there. Just watching that. Look, that's the swing. On it all the way through, not trying to yank it. Yeah, dropping in the slot, that back elbow firing. This one, went, I mean, it, it kept carrying. I guess he doesn't have my pop. I went right center of that field. Strauss, my bad. Same carry. It's our Hyundai Super Bowl. See your local Hyundai dealer today because the longer you look at a new Hyundai, the more there is to like. So then that second hit off Taiwan Walker puts a runner in scoring position for Josh Bell. It's a mush ball. Mush ball? Yeah. The soft ball. You know what I mean? I do. Josh Bell batting 371 with runners in scoring position this year. He's now four for 11 career off Taiwan Walker after his first inning single. And that's just like a, what a foot foot shy of a home run for Juan. Put that in his fifth two strike. Ground ball left side. Soto tried to advance on a ball in front of him. And he's caught in a rundown. He gets tagged out. Josh Bell will slide into second. Heads up play by him. Now he's taken off for third with Soto in the base path. He's tagged out as well. Chaos out there on the bases for the Nationals. Soto tagged out going to third. Josh Bell tried to take two extra bases. He's tagged out as well. And now we'll see. And, and I think he's talking about Luis Guillorme crossing the path right there and causing a distraction on this. The problem here, usually that ball coming, if it's going towards him, closer to him, that's an easy read, but going on the backside, Taiwan Walker standing over the top of him right there. And then putting your head down. Josh Bell had nowhere to slide. Juan Soto was still lying down in the base path. And now the Mets are coming out to check on Taiwan Walker. Let the trainer get out there and then told everybody he was OK. But just another mistake on the base pass. And that, I mean, you could, it, it's compounded by another, mis two mistakes, right? Bad read by Juan. Guy's going to his right. Understanding situational baseball right there, not everything's a go. He was playing back, let's say if he was playing in, easy read, right? Because he's going to have to charge it, but he's charging in closer to the bag, going towards the bag, not away from the bag. And then the other part is just running with your head down. So now Taiwan Walker after a leadoff double 
gets two outs on the base paths and deals with Nelson Cruz with two out and nobody on. Two outs between second and third on the same play. Yeah. Don't know that I've seen that one before. One and two to Cruz. That's the sixth out on the bases, not on a force out play by. Or pick off caught stealing for Josh Bell. Four. No, fifth. Sorry. Fifth. He's got three at home, one at third, one at first now. Thirteen outs on the bases. That are not pickoffs, caught stealings, four sets. It's tough. Davy Martinez preaches the little things. When done right, those things will help you win ball games. Fly ball to left. Canna camps under it. So after all that, Taiwan Walker is able to put up another zero. Mets up 3 nothing as we go to the fifth. goes this way as a runner you can't go there you have to stop if he goes this way it's an easy read you can keep on coming through but right there I just don't I don't know where the thought process was on it with Juan and then he's trying to do what he did which is create a misplay by Taiwan Walker sliding hard into him And I think Juan's saying, hey, he's bobbling the ball. He's bobbling the ball right there. And then he just lays on the base in the path. So you're saying if the third baseman essentially vacates that area around the bag, it allows you as the base runner to move towards the bag. But if the third baseman is, see, is in that area. So like if we're to pan out and see where Mikey's playing right now in line with the base. If he charges in, it's an easy read, right? Like as far as that. But if you're back, there's a lot of factors that play into this. Lindor out to left. Yadiel Hernandez almost overran it. Recovers nicely to make the grab. Down and away cutter right here that Lindor just smokes. I don't know how he got so much on it. It's a perfect pitch. One off the bat and a great play by Yadiel. That's that big deep breath you take after. Yeah. Big time sigh of relief. Here's Pete Alonzo. So I'll try and channel my inner Bob Carpenter here and Bob will do this significantly better than I on that play. I got six or rather five six one nine six. Do you know what I put Dan. What you put cluster. <laughs> More to it. <laughs> Guillaume to Lindor to Walker for the out. Of Soto, throw got into right field, and then Marte's throw to Lindor gets Bell. Let the kids play. They've almost had everyone touch the ball. Well, as many base runners have the Mets as the Mets have had so far today, and despite that low up on the base pass left last half inning the Nats are still very much in this game only down three nothing 
Yep. I mean, that's all. I mean, this is a, another pitch right here. That like Kaber takes a nice little walk out there. That's that can't happen. It's a perfect pitch inside corner, more on the plate than anything. And you are inside Chad Fairchild on that plate. Meaning he's set up inside the edge of the plate. Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Lonzo pops it foul right side. Counts even. Gamecast had that 1 1 pitch pretty well in the zone. Nearly the entire ball inside the strike zone plot. We've been calling Erasmo Ramirez the eraser. Yeah. I asked him today if he's cool with that, if he's all right with that nickname. He laughed, opened up his phone, and his little nickname for himself in his phone, eraser. I love it. So which came first, us or him? I'm pretty sure him, but he does approve. I open up the phone and says Kevin. I don't have my nickname. <laughs> Grumble to Franco. Two away. Ramirez bounces back nicely after that pitch on the inside part of the plate that could have been called strike two. Trey Turner, Daniel Hudson, and the Los Angeles Dodgers are coming to Nats Park for a three game series May 23rd through May. We forgot May 24th. That's my 40th. Remember that, everybody. Okay, got that. Show some that. You get your tickets now at nationals.com/tickets. Or take a picture of the QR code. Jeff McNeil walked in the first and lined out to right field back in the third. Rosmo Ramirez has gone more than one full inning three times in his eight appearances for Davey Martinez thus far this year trying to add another multi inning appearance today. Fly ball left field. Yadiel Hernandez will chase it but it fades out of play. If you were to go MVP of the team, you know, 33 games into this season, it would be hard for me to leave him off my top five, top three maybe. Orasmo? Because of how valuable he's been in certain, in, in different roles and being so consistent so far. Now nine strikeouts to only one walk has inherited Four runners and left them all stranded. One and two. Came into today having thrown 69% of his pitches for strikes. This will be his 20th pitch. Previous 19, 14 in the zone. This one misses.
counts full. That might be one of the first back to back that we've seen overthrows from him since he's been up. Didn't see him miss that big with the cutter twice in a row. So from 0 2 to 3 2. Drive backs up Lane Thomas, but he's there. Three up, three down for Erasmo Ramirez in the fifth. More quality work for the veteran right hander out of Davey Martinez's pen. Oh, I'm feeling a George Costanza at the US Open moment right here. <laughs> Ice cream all over the face. He's having a good time. They got the City Connect logo even on the ice cream helmets. Yeah, that's awesome. I like it. He knew exactly what he was doing. How about that? Spotted the camera early. Yadiel Hernandez pops up a bunt foul. Taiwan Walker booking it over towards his own dugout. Hat flying off. Gave it a good effort. When you're 6'4, 235, 240, you have a lot of people not really at the top of there trying to help you out. Look at that. Nobody goes to help. He's like, look, we're going to lose the battle. Might as well just. I appreciate the effort right there by Taiwan Walker. Six foot four, 253 is what he's listed at. It is a big boy. Well, you have the up to date. What did you have? 235. 235? But yeah. well, we had Tyler McGill yesterday at six foot seven. Mm hmm. They're rather, rather large humans. This guy's making Max look small in that rotation. Carl Edwards Jr. putting the pitch com in his hat. Yadiel grounded out to second back in the second. And another at bat where he turns an 0-2 into a 2-2. Standard day at the yard for him. Counts now full. That's got the leadoff man aboard last inning, and then things went pretty wrong from there but they'd love to have Yadiel on to lead off the fifth. Driven out to left. Foul and out of play. You know we talk about it with Yadiel and his ability he's shown I mean the 0 2 to 3 2. Just unfortunate the other night ending the game on the double play ball, but going against Edwin Diaz, one of the nastier closers in the game. Go down 0 2 and then foul off, foul off, foul off. Be in swing mode and to get it to 2 2, 3 2, and then just, I mean, hit a bullet. And there's the leadoff walk. Wow. What a what battle by Yadiel. <laughs> Kevin Bear Ruiz, his last five, batting 400. Brought that out to his last 15. Came into today batting 321 in those last 15 games. See the strikeout rate? Just a tick over 10%. He's got 10 in 92 at bats this year. 10 strikeouts. Little League style. Yeah. Swinging at the first pitch here, lifts a high fly ball to left. For out number one. You don't mind it either. I mean, first pitch swinging. He's got five knocks this year, all singles, but he's the ability first pitch for him to have good decisions, I think, is the part of it. You're okay with him swinging at that. Just missed it. 
guys just swing and swing. You know, on the first pitch, doesn't matter where it is. Kind of sucks sometimes when you have the hand-eye coordination that he does. You can you can put anything in play. Sometimes that ball you want to just foul off. You know, like like that decision is great, and you're like, yeah, maybe. And Davey Martinez has talked about that. Kaber can get his bat to pretty much anything. This one to Lindor's right. The backhand, the turn. Impressive 6-4-3 turn by the Mets there. And another leadoff base runner is left out there for the Nationals. McNeil on the turn. Washington Nationals. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Washington Nationals. 3 0 Mets. We go to the sixth. Carl Edwards Jr. will make his second appearance for the Nationals. Called up just the other day. Immediately got into a ball game in the first game of this series and gave up three runs. Charged with the loss. We'll try and bounce back against the same Mets club here today. Fastball changeup. Two curveballs he threw the other day. The changeup, it'll say sinker on the board, but it's 91 average on that. That's his best pitch. 95 or 94 average with the fastball. Good one there. Yeah, and it's set up. I mean, that that's perfect right there. Up and away. His changeup at 91 has nasty sinking action. Down and in. We thought it was a sinker. It was showing up on think, the. I did not think it was. We, it was showing up on the. Stat services as a sinker. We broke it down and saw it was a change up grip thanks to your sharp eye. Gotta have that eye. That's why it hit for a while. Well, try it. Here's the Mets box. Can a two for two coming into this at bat. They have drawn five walks. Soft ground ball moves Michael Franco to his left. Out number one. Nasty curveball right there. Get Mark Canna out on his front foot, one hand in it. That's the stuff that was happening a lot for Carl Edwards Jr. in AAA this year. A lot of soft contact. Not a lot of mistakes out of him. Yeah, the numbers at AAA were ridiculous. One earned run surrendered in 14 and a third. 17 strikeouts, just four walks. Held opponents to an 068 batting average. And yeah, the changeup that he throws, I mean, it is, it's a new pitch for him. He was just four seamer curveball usually. Tweaking it a little bit here and there. I think he's found some. You don't typically see that, a changeup that's just three, four miles an hour off your heater. Usually that's like a split, right? Like, yeah. It would be a split, but he's like a. Fastball up to 96 there. J.D. Davis 0 for 1 hit by a pitch in the fourth. In a two strike count. That curveball of his though you look back 16. Only 143 average against 17 088 on the curveball 18 077 on the curveball and then it started to creep up 19 it was 231 and that was it I mean really he was a two pitch pitcher. Now you add in that third to go along with that that's. That's nice. That signed him to a minor league. Contract this winter. Told me 
this was a good landing spot for him. He knows Davey, he knows Jim Hickey, the pitching coach, Henry Blanco. He had some big moments in Chicago, helped them win a World Series in 2016. Payoff pitch to Davis. Blows a fastball by him at 94. Find that curveball, then he just rips a fastball top of his own at the letters, stays on plane. It's part of the Toyota K's for Kids program. Washington area Toyota dealers donate $50 to the Children's Inn at NIH for every strikeout by Nationals pitchers. Luis Guillorme, 0 for 1 with a walk. And a first pitch ground ball. Cesar Hernandez has time. Quick sixth inning for Carl Edwards Jr. Bottom six coming. 8 9 1, due up for the Nets. It's simpler to manage your finances. PNC Bank, helping to make banking easier. Astros will be coming here to D.C. after their ball game with the Twins. They're up 11 to 3 in the eighth inning in game one of a doubleheader. O's up by one over the Cardinals. Phillies and Dodgers will play out on the West Coast later on tonight. D. Strange Gordon to lead it off, bottom six. Slow curveball from Taiwan Walker for strike one. That's only with one runner in scoring position thus far today. That was the Juan Soto double leading off the fourth, and then he was thrown out trying to advance to third on a ground ball in front of him. Walker will elevate and throw to Alonzo, who taps the bag for out number one. He got rid of that really quick. Alonzo was, I think he was surprised how quickly he got rid of that ball. Curveball. Fastball in, back him off, get on the curveball again. Walker faced the Nats three times last year. Pitched to a 5.09 ERA. Lane Thomas to the right side and through. Nets were in a shift. Playing Lane to pull the ball on the ground. He goes the other way and has a one-out single. Smart hitting right there. Oh, it's going to come in a little bit. Let's try. See where his head is. See where the belt buckle is. There is no effort to try to pull anything. Let me get my knock. So Lane now three for five career off Taiwan Walker with a homer. Brings up Cesar Hernandez. Has a hit in 14 of his last 16 games. Searching for his first knock today. Time now for our truest league leaders. When you start with care, you get a different kind of bank. Most hits in the National League. Two Nats in the top five, along with Pete Alonso. Yeah, not far behind Michael Franco with 33. Cesar is going to get you. I mean, look, he's not going to walk you on that on base. It's going to be a lot of a lot of knocks. Average oriented, hit oriented. How to find a ball right here. Got to get a pitch up in the zone, stay off the ground. Nats have already grounded into slash run into two double plays today through the first five innings. That has been an issue for them through their first five weeks of the season in the air left field side Canna charges it got a good read on that ball and there's two away I would say nice because it just we've seen that 
poke off the plate by Cesar falling for a hit. Just did it too hard. Here's one. Just missed a home run off Taiwan Walker his last time. Again called a strike on a pitch up and in at Juan. Chad Fairchild says strike one. Juan splits this year. Never yeah. really been a problem for him in the past facing no. same handed pitchers. But how about 16% first pitch swing against righties? So he, he just balls them up the whole time. Over 30 on lefties. So way more aggressive. Breaking ball for strike two. And so there, right there, that breaking ball. Think about the D, D Strange Gordon at bat. He started him out curveball, he went fastball hard up and in, and right back to the curveball. So first pitch up and in with the fastball, and then backdoor curveball. Just enough bat to foul that one off left side. Exit Velo for 101 on the Juan Soto double off the right field wall, right center field wall. Fastball hard in, curveball. Curve hard in. I mean, he's coming in the same, very similar sequences all the way around for Taiwan Walker. He hit the split last time. Still hasn't thrown. That's one of his favorite go to pitches. Couple foul balls back behind the plate. And that's box. Double from Juan in the fourth. Josh Bell singled back in the first, and the Elaine Thomas single here in the sixth. Ground ball up the middle again. Taiwan Walker fielding his position nicely. He's done a nice job through six, holding the Nats scoreless on just three hits. Come down to Nationals Park. Pups in the Park is back. Don't miss the unique opportunity to bring your dog with you to a Nats game. For more information and tickets, visit nationals.com slash pups. That's Mary the Dalmatian right there, one of the Budweiser Dalmatians that rides around with the Clydesdales. Another inning for Carl Edwards Jr. Needed just 11 pitches, eight of which were strikes, to get through a 1 2 3 sixth. Did you pet Mary the Dalmatian? I was holding on to Mary the Dalmatian for dear life as we were riding around Navy Yard. Hard ground ball backs up Cesar Hernandez, takes a couple steps. And there's out number one. They did not have Mary tied down to anything. She was on top of the, the yeah. cases of beer. She was just kind of sliding all over the place. And everybody seems pretty calm about the whole thing. Not you. Not me. I wanted to make sure Mary did not take a tumble. I think she's all right. She's done a few of those rides yeah. before, I'm sure. She's probably laughing inside. Like, who's <laughs> this guy? Rookie. Lineup turns over to Brandon Nimmo. Drives one to right. Juan Soto back. Extends the glove for out number two. So Carl Edwards Jr. in the zone. The Mets hacking early, and he's got two outs here, top seven. Back to back balls that were middle of the plate. One's a sinker. Ah, no, it's not. It's the changeup. 
And he tries to dart in a fastball at 96. Back to back. Outs. Good info out there. Good intel. Knowing where to play. First time the Nats have retired Brandon Nimmo today, and it comes on a 106 mile an hour line drive. Starling Marte over three. Still no action for Buck Showalter out in his bullpen. Taiwan Walker just at 73 pitches through six frames. Yeah, and not even a lot of hard contact, really. Or high stress. Yeah. More high stress for him going after balls and fielding. Yeah, true. One and two. Chased off the plate away right there with the four seamer. K. Barrett Ruiz took the brunt of that foul ball. He's taking a few off the chest. Here. Where were we where he had the one that missed the whole padding and just got him on the just underneath the shoulder on the left side. Winged him. That one squares him up right on the Nike symbol. Doesn't matter the protection. Still doesn't feel good. No doubt. Two and two. Did you ever have to catch at any level? No, I was the emergency catcher four teams though. Had gear for everybody. It was amazing. Really? Yeah. Did you ever Bad. think you were going to get into a game? Uh, twice. Yeah, I was totally cool with it. Um, it was just the wrong decision for me to want to be the emergency catcher for Mike Social. Why? Wow. He just puts you through everything as a catcher in that organization at that time with the Angels. It wasn't fun. Like, I had to actually do blocking drills. I'd have to go out there once. I think it was once a road trip. We'd go out and do blocking drills. Yeah, not fun. Not what I signed up for here. <laughs> I didn't know I'd have to work. Yeah. Emergency, not actual working catcher. Carl Edwards Jr. two scoreless innings. Josh Bell will try and get to the Nets started offensively. Bottom seven. That's trying to get those hot bats back. Talked about it on the pregame show how strong they've been offensively over their last. 11 games. Time for today's Charmin Ultra Strong stats, and this guy has been a big part of the reason why they've done such damage offensively. 2019, he made the All Star team with the Pirates. More power early in that season as he lifts this one foul left side. Higher average and on base percentage this year. Yeah. On another all star track for sure. Absolutely. And I mean, you take in the fact that he's been playing great defense behind every pitcher back there. I mean, that's nine extra, nine extra base hit difference. Those will come. Rolls over this one to the right side, charging it and getting off the throw just in time is Jeff McNeil. Josh Bell hustling down the first baseline, made it close. But what I appreciate too is. Big Phil has got had some bad hammies the last couple weeks. Bad, bad hammy, bad knee. Still busting it down the line. Smelling a hit. Gave himself a chance. Why? He hit the front part of the base. How many times do we see guys hit the middle or the back part? Not, not, not fundamental. Hit the front part. Make it easy on yourself. He did. Just got beat. I feel like you open yourself to more of a risk of injury when you hit the top of the base as well. Yeah, trust me. That happened to you? Mm -hmm. Blew out my ankle in college. Oh. I lunged and slipped on the top of the part of the base, and yeah, the ankle was not, it did not look good. 
not supposed to look like a C. Oh, no. <laughs> Nelson Cruz 0 for 2. Lined out to left in the first inning, and Franny, you, as we went to commercial break, we're talking about that line drive. Goes down as an out in the box score, but you loved his swing. I did. I mean, it's 95 corner in, and it's just dropping the head on it. I like it because the changeup last night is what he hit out to left center, not pull, not like a full pull, not trying to just get out in front and guess. We're seeing him start to back, back the ball up to exactly where he wants it to be. Good things coming. Drives this one to right. Marte's there. Two away. Nelson Cruz has four bombs on the season. All to the pull side, but that one that you're talking about yesterday, Franny, was left center. Left center on a changeup. And I like it because you think about the pulled home runs and you're guessing you're trying to get out there for some fastballs, which he's done. Sometimes you just got to get your foot down, stay back. Drive one like he did last night against McGill. Yadiel Hernandez on with a walk back in the fifth. Kyle Finnegan in the Nationals bullpen. Looks like he'll get the top of the eighth. Swing and a tip. Two and two. Good sinker down and in right there. Just over the top for Yadiel. Ground ball. So the Nats go one, two, three in the seventh. They'll need to come back in the late innings to have a chance to win this series over the Mets. This, this giveaway on Friday, May 27th against the Rockies. The first 20,000 fans will receive a Soto Shuffle bobblehead presented by Delta Airlines. Get your tickets now at nationals.com slash tickets. Kyle Finnegan. His first appearance since that dynamite performance out in Anaheim. This will be his 13th outing of the year. Let's go back to Sunday, Franny. He had a pretty impressive showing against a good middle of the Angels order. He did, and you look at the fastball that he throws right there. Trout up and away, up and away to Otani. And then freezes. Don't two bags. Another stellar performance by a bullpen arm. Feeling it. And you're gonna do that right here with Kyle Finnegan. Sinker split slider. Sinker slider. Occasional split to the righties. Sinker split to lefties. We'll get Lindor, Alonzo, and McNeil, top eight. Told me he kind of blacked out during that appearance in Anaheim, but was smiling pretty big thinking about striking out those three hitters. Gave up the hit the previous inning that allowed two inherited runners to score, and Said he got into the dugout, kind of composed himself and told himself, I'm just going to rear back, throw it as hard as I possibly can and go at these guys. It worked. It sure did. Two pitches, gets him a ground ball out. 
D Strange Gordon across for out number one. Quality pitches in the first two, two, three pitches. Guess what? You're going to get those outs, and if you want her, then you go for the punch out. I feel like with Kyle Finnegan so much, you, you watch and you're going, he's, he's trying for that strikeout pitch from pitch one. Well, you don't need that. Defense works. Keeps you in the zone. Makes that split, makes that slider, those two off speed, those secondary pitches even better. Last I checked, you can't strike a guy out on the first pitch. Nope. But some early contact will allow you to get off the mound a little quicker. Get the boys back in, get going. Pete Alonso 0 for 3 thus far. Struck out on a Yoan Adon fastball in the first, and then a couple ground ball outs. First pitch that we saw from Kyle Finnegan, 95 to Francisco Lindor. This one, 98. Throwing that point one matters. You said the other day the ability for pitchers to add in some tracks on their fastball is oh, pretty it's, crucial. It's crucial because I mean you can get locked into one speed easy. But you got a guy that goes plus or minus two or three and the ability to move it around a little bit. I mean that that's a whole new pitch. And relievers that are able to do that. That's I mean that's not the norm. Usually it's just max effort on on everything. Right. Swing and a miss. Good slider. Very deliberate worker is Kyle Finney, but. I feel like in the last couple outings we've seen him get in that tempo a little bit more and more, which is great. Again, having a reliever out there that just takes his time, he gets stale out there. Broken bat ground ball. Two ground ball outs for Kyle Finnegan through the three and four hitters in the Mets lineup. When you think the last now five guys that Kyle Finnegan is retired, three in the that game, Trout, Otani, and <laughs> Rendon, All Star, All Star, All Star, Lindor, All Star, Alonzo, All Star. I mean that yeah. that's every batter, every guy has got to be gaining more and more confidence for Kyle Finnegan because I mean he's starting to load it up and feel like he's got it. Jeff McNeil bidding for another opposite field hit just missed the third base bag and Jeff McNeil took everything out of his legs on this one and just went all upper body and hands it's just playing pepper with the left side. Miss right 98 yet again from Finnegan. Love what Cabert's doing right there. He is obviously there's the adjustment that's been made, setting up a lot middle of the plate. And Tanner Rainey for Finnegan and him. Let the natural movement go. Don't pitch the corners. Pitch with your stuff. And if it goes to the corner, great. Seth Lugo, their top setup man, ready for the bottom of the eighth. Growing up, Jeff McNeil thought his future as a pro athlete was in golf. 
Played the U.S. Junior Amateur in 2009. Scratch golfer. Still. Choke up, choke up on his pitching wedge. Tommy Fleetwood style. Just saying. It works. And he has the no, like it's a no knob yep. bat. I mean it's like the Jason Worth bat that he had. Just a little thicker handle. Wow. Talked about it the other night. Better weight distribution in the bat. No that's the puck. That's the Nimmo puck. This one's not the puck. This is just a just a big old handle. It's the same size as knob. Like an old school R161 I think it was. Without the knob. Usually the guys that have that flat part right there, they've had a hamate problem. That's why J Dub went to it. Yeah. Just a log. Really what it is. Another one, two. Another ground ball. Kyle Finnegan has faced six straight All Stars, has retired all six. K Bear Ruiz to lead off against Seth Lugo. Bottom of the. As a nap. It's the next five for the Nats. Astros coming to town tomorrow. Friday, Saturday night game, Sunday at 1.30. And the boys go back on the road. 6.30 games Monday and Tuesday at Miami. Tomorrow, Josiah Gray will take the mound in game one of that World Series rematch against the Astros. Very different roster now for the Nats. Josiah 4-2 and two on the year with a 3.45 ERA. Goes into this outing. Coming off two straight wins. Be Framber Valdez for the Astros. Coverage begins at 6.30 p.m. with Nats Extra on Mass. You can say the same thing about the Astros, too. I mean, not completely. Still big players involved. But Garrett Cole out, Granky. More of their lineup mainstays. Their villains are still there. Oh, yeah, Correa. Correa's gone. They got. Tuve, Bregman, and on down the line. K. Bear Ruiz trying to get on. Alvin has to chip away here in the eighth. One and two. Seth Lugo, curveball, four seamer, sinker changeup. No changeups to righties, but I mean, virtually the same way he's going to attack hitters. Curveball, four seamer. Up his fair share of hits, 11, 11 and a third. Swing and a miss. K. Bear Ruiz looks like he's saying he fouled that ball off. Yeah, Ch Chad Fairchild does not agree. Let's take a look. Nope. You know what he did? Done it. Tap of the bat hits the dirt right here, and that's what he feels like is going to be. Right there. That's what he feels like is the tip. So Seth Lugo gets the leadoff man. 34th round pick of the Mets back in 2011. He's developed into quite a weapon for them over the last handful of years. Seventh season in the bigs. Career 3.45 ERA. Go multiple innings when needed. You know what he goes back on is like his first step and his right foot, which is engaged with the rubber. Sometimes I, I feel like he taps it so much, he's like, Did I get the right foot in? Am I getting it right? Searching for <laughs> it. Searching for it. I know it's part of his old routine, but man, he taps a lot over there. <laughs> yep. Nope, there it is. Pulled, oh. just foul. Oof. You sure?
Driven in the air, left field. Wind knocks this one down, and Mark Canna is there for out number two. Just a little too high right there. I mean, if it's letter high, this one's a ball maybe above the letters. Letter high, I think that he drives that ball, but just, just misses it. Everyone talks about like the pitch up and how you know that's been the new rage the last couple of years. It's a pitch as a hitter you see and you see huge. You take these big old cuts. There's a reason why they live up there with that velocity. Tough to get the barrel to it and drive it out at the right angle. Yeah. The crazy thing is that I thought there'd be more balls off the backstop from pitchers than there would be middle of the plate. That's like their miss is middle of the plate when they're trying to go up. They're not trying to go middle of the plate. Oh, and two to D Strange Gordon. Steve Ciszek for the ninth. Three pitch strikeout. Taiwan Walker only had one strikeout through his seven scoreless. Seth Lugo with two Ks in a scoreless eighth. Brought to you by Washington Metropolitan Area Transit Authority. Ride confident with Metro. We're ready to welcome you back. And by PNC, helping to make banking easier. Check out our game summary as we go top nine. Only three hits for the Nats today. Taiwan Walker only struck out one batter. Got 11 ground ball outs in his seven scoreless. Mark Canna's had a nice day. Joanna Doan, five walks. Here's Steve Ciszek, veteran right-hander. Appearance number 15 for the Nats this season. It's a very low three-quarter release out of Steve Ciszek. Slider sinker, four-seamer, four-seamers to the lefties. Slider sinker to the right-handers. Slider's been really good of late. Marcana singled the left center. Singled on an infield hit to the left side in the fourth and then came around to score. In the air, left center and deep. Lane Thomas back to the wall. It's gone. Mark Canna, just his third extra base hit of the season. Three hits for him today. Two runs scored, and now one driven in. For Mark, elevated fastball. You want to stay there. He's going to do this on time for the heater, and just sinks right. I mean, before he even made contact, Ciszek put his head down. Trying to get it up and away. It just leaks out just enough. That's what we were talking about earlier, the elevated fastball, where the misses are. And it's it's crazy to think that that's where the ball ends up when you're trying to get there. Right? Up, up, up and away. It's middle. Yeah. So now not a safe situation. Edwin Diaz still throwing out there in the Mets bullpen. And Josh Rogers now for the Nets. I wonder, I mean, Lugo didn't throw a whole lot of pitches there. You think they might throw them out there for another one? Feels like a lot of managers, Franny, once they get their closer hot, they tend yeah. to bring him in even if it's no longer a safe situation. We'll see what Buck does. Yeah, he well, I'll watch myself. I think I know where you were yeah. about to go with that. One, two. Drilled to short. D strange Gordon to a knee. And there's out number one. You know, and you look at workloads too. I mean, Edwin Diaz now working in 
It would be his 14th game. It's pretty much on par with the top of the league as far as appearances. He's been very good for them this year. Oh. Luis Guillorme looks at strike one. And that funky delivery of Steve Ciszek. I mentioned this a few weeks ago. He told me he grew up a big Red Sox fan, was trying as a kid to mimic Pedro Martinez's windup with Derek Lowe's mechanics. Hadn't seen video of himself throwing until college. Watched back a bullpen session and said that is not anywhere close to either of those two guys. Had no idea he was throwing from the arm angle that he was. I tried to mimic Barry Bonds and Mark McGuire combo. How'd that work out for you? Slap hitter. <laughs> Just didn't, didn't work out. I'm guessing you didn't need to watch back video to no. realize that. No. Jason Shreve is going to get up in the pen for Mets. I, I feel like maybe one more run does it. Maybe. Yeah. Two and two. But we would mimic all those guys like in the Bay Area. You had two teams, two like monstrous teams with great stances. You'd mimic their batting stances playing against each other, my brother and I. Of course. Growing up in this area, I used to mimic Cal Ripken Jr.'s stance, but I had to but, evolve it. Yeah, I was going to say you had to change it every day. <laughs> every other day. What was your favorite one? Violin? I like the violin a lot. Yeah. Bat over the shoulder. Yeah. Swing and a miss. Good fastball from C. Sheck. I can almost guarantee Cal Ripken thought there's only X amount of hits in a certain stance. I have a buddy of mine who's a hitting coach in the big leagues that thinks that too. We're on the same page. You get to that limit, you got to switch it up. Yeah, switch it up. And he had a lot of hits in his career. I wonder how many stances overall. Ooh. Right? Because they were different. There was not, that was like a, just a not, variation. Not subtle of it. tweaks. No. Did you evolve your stance a lot over the course of your career? Dude, I had a game the day after Bonds hit 756 against the Nats. I had four different stances in the game. Wow. Completely different. I was so lost. It was really fun, really fun to go through that <laughs> serious period. Thanks for reminding in me. In a big league game of yeah. all places. Yeah. I think it was John Lannon that was pitching that day. It was seven. Lanimal. And then Barry Bonds took me into the batting cage in Pittsburgh the next day. Double header in between games. Two and one to Tomas Nito. Said stop listening to everybody and start getting your foot down. Just let's go simple. Let's back it up. Get your foot down. Start doing some things through BP to me. Ended up hitting 370 from that point on the rest of the year. There you go. Good slider running away from Nito for strike two. But yeah, my ring. My stance evolved. It was, I mean, it was virtually, it was a variation of the same thing. You know, my interview coach as the sideline reporter would always tell me there's only so many interviews in a certain arm position. Yeah. So I had to evolve. Yeah. Put the microphone kind of different, higher, lower. Watch back film. No, nah, it's not working today. What was your approach against with J Dub? <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Try not to get offended with whatever he might do. <laughs> nice bounce back from Steve Ciszek. Gets two strikeouts to end the top of the ninth. Natzel look for a crooked number. Try and come back against the Mets in the bottom of the ninth. Channel leadoff lane that we saw much of the second half of last season to start a rally bottom nine. Nats down four, they'll face Edwin Diaz. An impressive 1.38 ERA for the Mets closer thus far. Seven of eight in save opportunities. Has a four-run lead to work with in this ninth inning. Four-seamer slider, nasty slider. He's throwing it 51% of the time. It's 90, 98 average on the fastball. But here's the, the kicker. The fastball has a higher spin rate than his slider. 
which is insane. Wow. And so you hear about that and you're like, oh, OK, the analytics, it's great. It's like, no, that's significant. That 98 plays a lot different. It plays maybe one or two miles an hour more, but it stays on plane and he loves to live at the top. But there's times that he adjusts and he's down in the zone, and that's when the slider has even extra bite. Buck Showalter going with a little better defensive alignment. Travis Jankowski takes over for Mark Canna in left. Lane Thomas one for two with a single in the sixth. Looks at ball one. Doing it. That's offense, not even a, multiple base runners on at any point today. Just zero traffic. Most traffic they've had was that pile up by the third base bag with Juan Soto and Josh Bell. Yeah. That lead car was holding things up. Misses off the plate inside, and it's three and one. Diaz finished off that combined no hitter that the Mets had against the Phillies back on April 29th. Payoff pitch. Swing and a miss. There's that nasty slider. Nasty slider. And look at this thing. Starts knee high. And it just, it's not even that big, right? You look at it, you're like, you're not getting this big sweeping action. Just has a little dart at the bottom. You know, we talked about that with the Mariano cutter. It was just late. He had the ability to manipulate this thing. It's just short baby, baby slide. Not fun. I think you're on it, and then it's <laughs> by you. Cesar Hernandez trying to check in 0 for 3 thus far. Again, Diaz falling behind a hitter 2 0. Guillaume. Couple steps in at third, protecting against the bunt. And for those that are, we need base runners. Why aren't you taking until you get a strike? Because it's Edwin Diaz, and you've got two pitches that he can swing. You could swing and miss with. It's all he has. You don't want to get to two strikes. Why? Why should you give him up? Why should you give him a strike? Now two two. So different approaches against different closers. You're saying. Potentially, I mean, just, yeah. Just, just Edwin Diaz is a guy that you just do not want to get to two strikes with. He's proven it. Bounces that, and you appreciate it slider. when you look at the 2-0, and it's a, you know, part of the plate really that he swings at, and then he balls up a backdoor slider that gets called a strike, but it's a pitch that he's going to roll over with, and he takes that to get to three-two. Another full count. Another strikeout. Diaz now with 19 strikeouts in his last 10 and two thirds innings. Man, this thing just the same exact pitch to Lane Thomas. And if you look at it and you come in, came into the game today with. 22 strikeouts, it's 46% strikeout rate. Pretty good. It's insane. Barring a late comeback here with two outs in the ninth, Mets are going to continue their run of not losing a series thus far this season.
And if it does stay like this and you look at it, you're going, there's no moral victories in anything, but the Nats have put themselves in a chance to win four consecutive series. They haven't. But after last home stand, you were just wondering, you're like, are they going to get near there again? Yes. They've given themselves a chance. Playing more competitive baseball, certainly. But only three hits today. A couple more outs on the base paths. And that's where the focus is going to go on, I think. Just more than anything is just the giveaway outs, the two and two to Soto. Not happy with that strike two call. Hasn't been happy with a number of calls from Chad Fairchild today. No, and that was a good pitch right there. I can understand where he's at. Cool. You never understand where being Juan Soto is at. <laughs> That's just a different animal. But as far as being able to think that you know everything's close to you as a ball. Driven to right center. This ball is crushed. Does it have enough to get through the wind? This time it does. Hung up there for a second. Juan Soto has homered in back-to-back -back ball games. It's 4-1. 101 to him, 106 by him. Elevated four seamer and Juan Soto. Like, how does that ball just clear out by a, a rope? It looked like it was gonna go into the second deck. And I thought scoreboard. Trying to get it in there again and just misses. Middle of the plate. Up. Juan didn't miss it. Just missed a homer in the fourth by maybe five feet. Doesn't miss this time. All three earned runs. Well, all three runs that Edwin Diaz has given up this year. All solo, solo shots. The third home run given up. So Soto number eight on the season, RBI number 11. One and one to Josh Bell. Six total base for one. He's got to be over 900 OPS now. Got to. One and two. Josh Bell trying to keep this game going and notch his 13th multi hit game of the year. Fills the count. What a take. Popped up left side. Guillaume over, well into foul territory. An adjustment as the wind pushed it back. And he's got it for the third out in the ninth. Mets wrap up a four to one win and a series win. They improve to 22 and 11 on the season. Nationals fall to 11 and 22. Coming up on Nats extra post game. Break down Yohan Adon's start today. Five walks for the 23 year old righty in just three and two thirds. Show you that. Interesting base running play where Juan Soto and Josh Bell were both tagged out at third on the same play. And we'll hear from Davey Martinez. I'm sure he has some thoughts on the walks on the base running today. Nationals frustrating loss gave themselves a chance to win a series but fall today four to one.